So, Rex, the topic of today is what you're doing with Dr. Scholes. Uh, we're talking feet, and they picked you as a feet expert. They they had to, because look, they knew that I was uniquely qualified, man. I, I Two things that I'm certain of, I, I know football and I know feet. And I have to admit, when they first called, I'm like, oh, yeah, right, sure. I'm like, really? Then they, they, they pitched it to me. It's like, look, man, we're trying to get, you know, with all these sports starting up and things, you know, we need the, 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 the perfect athlete's foot without somebody actually having to go through the suffering of athlete's foot. And so when they did that, they sent me some products over and I was like, dude, this is unbelievable. Like this is some really good stuff here. So I'm like, all right, I'll do it. And it's, uh, you know, knowing there's going to be, you know, everybody's like, oh my God, you're doing this type of stuff. But yeah, it's, it's great. And I have to admit, like everybody knows Dr. Scholes is like the, the best of the best when it comes to, you know, foot care products, but man, the, the, they got a, a, the spray. Anybody that ha has had athlete's foot, as soon as you try this thing, man, like instant cooling, all that stuff. And, and obviously the dudes, all of us are going to be like, forget the wipes, man. Just give me the spray. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I actually went on like amazing race and, yeah. you know, you can't take, you know, you can't take the spray bottle. So I'm like, all right, give me these wipes or whatever. Man, those things are easy as heck to use. So either way, they worked out great. And and it's a funny thing, but it's a, it, you know, it, it's a funny, you know, partnership. But I get it because in a locker room, man, that's so prevalent athlete's foot. But we're, we're going to try to knock it out. And, and I wouldn't be shocked with all these products. They'll start. They're going to be in every locker room around. So. You're in, so I think it's, I think the coolest thing about this is your attitude about the whole thing. Oh. You're, you are embracing the feet. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you know why? It's like, look, I've been married for 35 years and it's like, okay, like I'm the only guy that, you know, is attracted to like, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like, my wife is, you know, she's gorgeous and she has gorgeous feet and I don't care. Like, and that's the truth. And, and, uh, and I'll own it. That's, that's, that's me. I, I tell you what's crazy is so I spent 30 years coaching, was a head coach, in the NFL for eight years. And I think I'm more known for, Hey, that's that, that's that foot coach, you know, like, that yeah. foot fetish coach more than it is. Hey, this guy is, you know, he was in the NFL for all the, this time and all that. So. You know, but that's cool when, when somebody says, aren't you the, the, the guy that had the foot fetish, the coach? I'm like, that's me. That That's me. <laughs> I got to give you another story, too. That was pretty funny. I want to hear it. I can't All wait. Right. So I'm going in New England. And, man, every single one of these people, they got these little signs up. And they're all, like, you know, holding these things up. And it's something about feet and, you know, whatever it is. And we're playing him in a playoff game. And I'm like, oh, God, like, look at this, man. This is brutal. But at, at the time, somebody yells out, hey, Rex, what do you think of my girlfriend's feet? And I'm like, I can ignore it and play like I never heard him. Or I can look back. I'm like, I look back. I go, man, they look pretty nice. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, I just own it. And it, it is what it is. Oh, that is so funny. You got heckled, but that's okay. You owned it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I've been called a lot worse. You so know. we have to talk about we have to talk a little bit about the beginning of uh of the NFL season, of course. Um, you know, week obviously, you know, we're one week in. Um how much how many how much are you keeping abreast of the of of the league these days? Um well, you know? I, I watch every game. So I'm a I, I do a couple of shows for ESPN, um, Sunday countdown, and then I do a show with Mike Greenberg called Get Up on Monday morning. I watch every single game. And literally that's kind of my job. I want to be prepared for it. I actually have a son that's coaching. He's been coaching in the league now for six years. Yep. Um and I still have my twin brother coaches, but other than that, like I, I want to be on top of it. I don't want to be one of these guys that just shows up and flies by the seat of his pants. I want to, I want to get into it, watch all the games, and and know what's out there. Um, 
And quite honestly, man, I mean, we had some amazing games. Week one already, we had amazing. some amazing games. Uh, but one of the strangest things I saw happen last night, like here you have a minute left. You have three timeouts left. And you have Russell Wilson, a guy you traded a zillion player, players and draft picks for, and you decide to milk the clock all the way down and attempt a field goal. I get that. What was it, like a 30-yard field goal? No, yeah. it's 64-yard field goal. Like, who does that? It's insane. And, yeah, it was insane. And, and the fact, the other thing that is, is insane is the guy had the distance for it. Like, like, oh, my God, he actually might have made it if it was online. It would have been close. But, yeah, that was a crazy decision. And, and one, I'm sure, you know, this is a rookie head coach, Nathaniel Hackett. I'm sure it'll be like, Years later, like, oh, God, what what was I thinking? I, I should have just let Russ get, you know, put it in his hands and then milk it down, get an, an easier field goal. But, uh, you know, but that that's fun. But we had so many good games, so many good games to start with. And, and I think you just realized, too, that how much you miss football, you know, like how much you Absolutely. actually miss football. And now it's back and it feels like our life is better because of it. So, and then, so just one last question here. What do you think the dot, I mean, none of us have a crystal ball, but what do you think the dominant coaching story is going to be for this season? Oh, well, I think it's always Dallas. <laughs> for whatever oh, reason. Every year. You know? <laughs> so Mike McCarthy, here's the, the great thing. We're going to give you a job, but you better win the Super Bowl. Like, that that's his job security. It's like Sean Payton's already out there. Everybody's already saying not only is Mike McCarthy in the hot seat, but they've already named a replacement for him. You know, so it's like, it's crazy. He's a good football coach. He won 12 games last year. He's won a Super Bowl as a coach, but yet he's on the hot seat and, and all these type of things. And and it is it is crazy, but it almost seems like, uh, every year, a third of the head coaches get replaced. And, every you know, like I got fired being 500, you know, with, with the Bills. I get fired my two years. I'm there. And there was like up until last year when they really had those great, you know, starting to have these great teams. There's one player left on it. There's nobody left, you know, from those teams that I had. I'm like, I, right. you know, there, there's an old saying that, um, you know, no coach can win without good players. There are some coaches can't win with them, but no coach can win without them. So, you know, if you have good players, that's a great thing. But I think right now the way the game is, expectations are like you better be really good. And if you have, have a, you know, really good players, you better be good or you're out. And it's it's something that coaches used to have a longer rope. You used to get like maybe four years and, and then they'd, you know, see how you're doing or whatever. Now, not the case. You can be fired after one year. Do you think, I mean, who, besides, besides, you know, the, the, besides the kind of coaching turmoil, um, it's going to be another amazing quarterback year, ter- year of quarterback turmoil as well. Um, you just staying, you know, mentioning the Cowboys, uh, Reminds me of the inch, instant upheaval that everybody has towards Dak already. Uh, one <laughs> one game in, um, which is he has the hardest job in the NFL, uh, <laughs> in my in my opinion. Yeah. Um, who? What other dominant storylines are you really are you really looking forward to unfolding this year? Yeah, I want to see these young guys, and and you know, I'm I'm just a fan of football now, but. All these young quarterbacks, man, like we always say, well, who's going to replace these guys? Who's the next guys down the line? Well, is has there ever been a better group of quarterbacks than we have in the National Football League right now? Like, no, and we got them all. We got the old <laughs> guard, right? We still have the old guys hanging in there. Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, two of the best that have ever done it, you know. And then you got the middle of the, you know, the the middle range guys, your Russell Wilsons and guys. But then we, look at the young ones, though, like Lamar Jackson. Oh, by the way, he'll be 25, I think, this year. Yeah. What? 25? Yeah. And he's going on like year four or five, whatever. Joe Burrow, you know, you, you've you got uh, Herbert, 
you, you've got Josh Patrick Allen. Mahomes, by the way. Oh, and maybe the best athlete of all time and Josh Allen playing the position. And to a tongue of a lawyer, he just a throw in. He, forget about him. He doesn't, you know, he's not any good. J, you know, Jalen Hurts, all these guys is like, man, the, the, I mean, this is crazy how how talented this group of quarterbacks is. I'm glad I'm not coaching defense against these dudes. <laughs> Awesome. If I would, I'd be killing them. You know that. I'd be you, I know. 